All right, hello everybody. What is up? What is going on? What's up? What's up? Phil here, live on the stream. Today is Sunday, October 15th, 2017. That's right, folks. We're about halfway through October already. Oh my God, can you believe it? Dude, this time of the year flies by so quickly because of so many, so many new releases, right? <clears throat> There's so many new games coming out. Back to back to back to back. And the thing is, they're all lengthy games and they're all pretty good, right? You know, I just, at the end of September, I was playing great games like Cuphead, right? Then I took a little bit of time off. I came back immediately, you know, playing Spyro as my patron's choice playthrough for the fall. Then I started Shadow of War this week. <laughs> that was a pretty outstanding game. I played that for like three days straight. And now The Evil Within has come out. And this game, I think, has exceeded all expectations for most people. We all were expecting a game on par with the original. This game far surpasses the original Evil Within, in my opinion. <clears throat> Both in story, graphics, gameplay, everything. They really went uh, along with, with, I would say, gamer feedback. People who, you know, criticized that first game, stating, number one, it was too much gore and not a little psychological horror. And number two, that there was too much run-and-gun gameplay. The whole game seemed to just be running and gunning, right? This game, woof, totally different vibe to it. Seriously. It's just pretty awesome. Um, pretty damn awesome that this game seems to be like the modern-day survival horror uh, franchise in a lot of ways. And, I, you know, I was disappointed with Evil Within 1. I, I kind of said, you know, I, I was hoping it would be kind of the modern franchise to take up the mantle of survival horror, and it really failed to do that. This game seems like it's definitely doing that, right? Um, it's got elements of Silent Hill with its open-world roaming aspect. It's got elements of The Last of Us with its sneaking and stealth kills and crafting. It's got elements of Resident Evil with its gunplay. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the combination of all the good things that you would want from survival horror slammed into one game and I'm certainly not going to complain about that. Right? I'm really liking it. <laughs> so, yes ladies and gents, an awesome game. I'm really enjoying it, okay? Um however, as you guys might have noticed, I am falling behind already. Um, here we are on Sunday. We've got a new release on Tuesday, South Park The Fractured But Whole. And if you know anything about the game, you'll know it's an RPG, meaning it's going to be similar to the, the Stick of Truth, another 20-plus hour playthrough. I'm already in the midst of Shadow of War, which I haven't even finished Act 2, and the game apparently has four acts. And now I'm in the middle of Evil Within 2. I'm in Chapter 9 of 17. And, you know, now we're going to be starting South Park, and it's like, holy shit. You know, every game is good, and every game is incredibly long. Even with me streaming over six hours of gameplay every day, I'm still behind on these games. Um, and I knew, I knew there wasn't going to be a way around it, honestly. <clears throat> I kind of figured this is exactly what was going to happen, all right? Which is why I got people asking me a million things. Are you going to play the Overwatch Halloween uh, event? Are you going to be playing Batman and... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, when are you getting back to Spyro? And I'm getting all these questions. Are, are you going to play Friday the 13th again? And my answer is very simply, I don't have time right now. I'm in the middle of so many big, great games that I'm already running behind on. There's no way I can just drop that to start doing other random stuff on stream, okay? <clears throat> so, that being said, um, you know, I'm doing my best to stay, you know, keep up with everything, to stay... Uh, running with all the games and not fall too far behind. I know at this point Shadow of War has been on hold for a while. I fully expect it's still going to be on hold for a bit. Um, because what I'm planning on doing is playing The Evil Within today and tomorrow. And what I'm hoping is I can get as far as humanly possible today and tomorrow in the game. Alright. Um, then, tomorrow night, Monday night, I'll be playing South Park The Fractured But Whole live here on stream as it unlocks at 9 p.m. Pacific time for about two hours, and then all day Tuesday will be South Park. And then based on your feedback, okay, I'll determine on Wednesday, do I want to do South Park all day again, or do I want to split the day, maybe half Evil Within, half South Park, half South Park, half Shadow of War. You know what I mean? I'm going to have options now to decide what games I want to juggle and what exactly I want to do on my streams, okay? <laughs> 
So, I'm pretty, uh, you know, I'm pretty interested in all these new games. I'm having fun with all the new games, but, you know, it is tough to juggle them all when they're all so long. Um, this week, we'll finally see some variety. Instead of me just playing one game, one game, one game, I get the feeling I'll start juggling between two to three games and go from there. Okay, sound good? Hope so. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, I have an update in regards to another game that a lot of people have been asking about, WWE 2K18. Um, I publicly stated months ago that I was not interested in playing this game because, number one, it doesn't have a story mode anymore. Okay, and that really disappointed me because the story mode, the campaign mode, whatever it was, showcase mode, used to be the highlight for me of the game. I would love playing through that for like, you know, six to eight hours or however long it was. Um, and when they took that out, it really disappointed me. Number two, the career mode last year was shit. It really wasn't improved at all. It was actually quite bad. Um, and number three, being quite honest here, my Sims that I used to do all the time have, you know, very much waned in popularity. Um... Especially because I don't do wrestling commentary anymore or whatever. People don't get super hyped for any kind of sims or anything that I do anymore. Plus, there's the added factor that I'm no longer in a managed partnership. And I'm not even exaggerating here, ladies and gentlemen. Every single video that I ever made of WWE in the past has been claimed on YouTube and or muted. Because it all has WWE copywritten music in it. And they claimed every fucking video possible. <clears throat> So, literally, if I were to play this game, I would have to mute all the music in it, okay? So, I publicly made the statement I wasn't playing it. Then, someone messaged me, all right, and said, Well, I really want you to play the game anyway. Even if there's no music, I would consider donating it to you. And so, for the past couple of weeks, it's actually been two or three people who've been hinting that they might want to donate the game. Uh, would, that, would that convince me to play it? Okay? So then I said, all right, well, folks, here's the deal. If someone is willing to consider donating the game, then I would consider playing it. Because I'm not going to spend 60 bucks on a game that potentially I may just play a couple times and not like the career mode. And I may just do a couple sims and never touch it again. Since there's no showcase mode, I'm not going to get my money's worth out of the game. Um, well, last night, it was that Anonymous actually contacted me and he said he's willing to donate a $60 PSN, you know, voucher, gift card, whatever, uh, for me to get the game. So I have not confirmed it yet. I believe he did send me an email overnight uh, with this voucher, but I have not had a chance to redeem it yet. Uh, I will do that later tonight. <clears throat> and if it is valid, which I hope it is, then I will be uh, getting a WWE 2K18. All right. Will I be playing it this week? I'm going to be honest with you all. Probably not. There's too much else going on. I'm already in the midst of Shadow of War, Evil Within 2, and now South Park. There's no way I'm going to be able to play a fourth game at the same time. That would be suicide. That would be like, there's no way. You know, people would be so pissed off that I'm not playing the games that they have these ongoing narratives and stuff. You know what I mean? So there you go. Um, I will be playing it, but probably not this week. What I will do is wait till there's actually some time between the new releases you know, right now, the only thing I got going on is Spyro, and Spyro literally only needs about two hours left, if that, to beat it. So after Spyro is done, I'll have this to kind of be the downtime thing that I do. It'll be WWE to try to balance with everything else, all right? But that is, I have to confirm that the code works tonight. Some people, in the, you know, over the years have sent me codes, and sadly, they don't work. For whatever reason, either it's a, just a typo, or for some reason, the code is just invalid. That's happened. Sometimes it's for a different region, you know. So we'll see tonight. We'll check it out tonight. I'll let you know. <clears throat> okay. All right, everyone. Now, I have good news that I would like to share with all of you. All right? I still can't give you the absolute specifics yet because there's no contract signed or anything. There should have been at this point. But Twitch contacted me last night and apologized because in one week's time, ladies and gentlemen, in exactly one week from today, I will be doing a special event on stream. This is going to be an event where I'm going to be partnering with Twitch to demo the capacity and the possibility of stream extensions. So allow me to explain. Twitch is going to set me up with a game and they're going to set me up with a special stream extension that I'm going to install on my stream. 
okay? As you watch me play this game, you're going to be able, if you're watching on a PC, laptop, anything that has basically clickable, all right? Mobile, I've told, is not going to work yet. This is their first experiment with this kind of thing. So they're working through it. I guess first it's going to roll out on, like, desktops, laptops. Then they're going to make it compatible with mobile. So it won't be compatible with mobile yet, just to warn you. <laughs> but this extension is going to allow you to click on my stream while I'm playing a video game to give input. And it's actually going to affect the gameplay. So I just want you to think about how cool this is, right? We already have certain interactive games, uh, you know... For example, I was playing games like Jack, uh, Jackbox Party Pack, where people can log in and vote and play, right? But never have we really had a game where you can directly, just by clicking, actually affect the game, right? That's pretty cool. Um, and I'm pretty excited about that. So, I'm very curious to see, first of all, how this works, alright? And to see, you know, is it, is it gonna be entertaining? What's gonna happen, alright? Now, I actually have something very special to tell you about, ladies and gentlemen. Um, while I'm doing this event, next Sunday, it's going to be a week from today, okay? First of all, it's going to be, I think it's, it's, I think I need to start a little later. I think they slotted me to, to do this around like 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. So I may actually do like a little mini stream before that of something. Maybe I'll finish up, maybe, you know what? Maybe I could finish up Spyro. I could just do like the last hour of Spyro and then switch over to this special event or something like that, right? That could work. I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, um, in addition to me doing this special event, all right, where I'm going to be demoing this extension, ladies and gentlemen, you may not realize this, next weekend is TwitchCon. TwitchCon is the convention for Twitch streamers and Twitch viewers, right? People go, they meet up with big popular streamers and all that stuff. They learn about new technology on Twitch and they participate in all kinds of special events. Obviously, I'm not going to be there. This is the busiest gaming time of the year for me. Even if even if they probably offered me a paid trip, I probably still wouldn't go. I mean, I have to work. <laughs> I can't be that behind on, on the new hot releases, right? Um, but while TwitchCon is going on, all right, and as I am doing the demoing of this new extension, I am going to be featured at TwitchCon. Like, my stream will be live broadcast live at TwitchCon. There's going to be a live audience of people there watching and being able also to, to contribute. So not only are people who are watching the stream at home going to be able to use this new extension to participate, there's going to be people in person at TwitchCon who also are going to be able to, to interact and participate in this stream. And I'm going to basically be... I featured... I believe they said it was going to be for about... Um, three to three and a half hours. I think they said they wanted me to do it from like two to say like six. I'm not positive because I don't have the contract yet. I don't have the actual specifics in writing yet at all. Okay. So that's going to be awesome. It's Not only am I going to get the normal exposure from you guys watching and hopefully, I, I'm telling you right now, I hope you'll tune in. This is going to be a crazy experiment. All right. Want to see how this works. I have no idea if and how this is going to work. Um, I hope it does, <laughs> but I guess we'll find out live together next week. This is a big thing, you know, that they actually selected me, so I hope that you guys will show up. And then they have a live audience of people in person at a convention who are also going to be participating. It's pretty awesome. All right? It's pretty damned awesome. So I am pretty excited. I want to see what happens with this. Um... You know, and, and go, and, you know, the, the sky's the limit, because if Twitch likes, you know, how this goes... Maybe they'll be contacting me in the future for other stuff. I don't know. But certainly this was a, a, it's a special opportunity. It's the perfect time because it's a weekend next weekend when there are no new releases next weekend. So it actually makes sense for me to be taking away a stream to do that. So it's going to be pretty excellent. Okay, I'm pretty excited. I hope that you guys will also show up for this, like I said. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. And yes, I was handpicked for this. Um, I guess, you know, what's happened is actually, I, I told you guys about this a few months ago. Um, you know, over the course of this year, Twitch has been really good to me. And let me explain how. Twitch, unlike YouTube, YouTube is basically like a, 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 a an agitated parent that can't have time for you. So they will basically have you guilty until proven innocent. All right. Oh my God. 
Content ID match. Oh my god. Copyright strike. Oh my god. And the bottom line is YouTube doesn't even check on half the shit to see if it's valid. I got copyright strikes this year from someone impersonating Rockstar Games, and it wasn't Rockstar Games. And then I had to bend over backwards to get YouTube to remove the strikes because they were fucking idiots who didn't even confirm that they were legit. It was really stupid. Okay. Um, Twitch is the exact and polar opposite. All right. So this, this year, as I returned to Twitch, there were a lot of assholes who mass flagged my streams and, you know, were, tried to report me to Twitch for violating the rules. And every once in a while, Twitch would contact me and say, FYI, this is happening. You know, you're not violating any rules, but here's some tips on how to maybe avoid having this kind of happen. At one point this year, they contacted me and they said, what we'd like to do is, is tell, talk to you a little bit about terminology you use on your streams and how you, how you say things in regards to, say, cheering and tipping and stuff like that. So I actually had a personal contact with Twitch where I had a good discussion about this back and forth. And he was a really good guy. And he was like, no, you're not in any trouble at all. You know, this is just good a good discussion for us to have, a healthy discussion to make sure that everything is kosher on both sides. Okay. So after having these really nice conversations with Twitch over the course of this year, they, they basically started checking out my streams on the regular and they saw that they were good streams and they decided to include me in this event. I mean, how cool is that? That's how stuff happens, folks. So, I mean, here we are. I'm not even a year back from streaming on Twitch. And let me tell you, the experience of streaming on Twitch now versus how it used to be is just so different. Like, it used to be, it didn't seem like, uh, it didn't seem like me streaming on Twitch really mattered. And what I mean by that is, like, I would try to make some money doing it. I would try to run ads and stuff. This is before they even had cheering or anything like that. None of that existed back in, you know, 2013. Uh, 2014, when I when I stopped streaming on Twitch for a few years there, um, and it was really tough because I was trying to stream and then this whole site would go down or you know there'd be a League of Legends event and because of that everyone's streams would run like crap and of course everyone would be disappointed because they couldn't watch my stream because my stream would keep crashing or whatever and it wasn't me, um, and then for whatever reason the past few years Twitch seems to have done a complete big turnaround man, seriously. It's just, it seems like Twitch is in, in league with gamers. They understand what we're trying to do. They, they, they want us to continue to be able to do this for a living. And they support us. And what a difference. Now versus old Twitch, like new Twitch this past year, I've had such a great experience. I can't, I seriously can't say anything negative. It's been so good. And now, you know, I'm getting this opportunity in a week. And I'm really excited for it. And I'm really grateful for it. Because this could give me a lot of exposure. You know, there could be hundreds, if not thousands of people who are going to now see this stream because i'm going to be featured at twitchcon i'm probably going to be featured on the main maybe the main twitch stream i don't know but i get the feeling i'm going to have a lot of people who are going to be like wow this guy's pretty cool and i want to check out his stuff and you know there's going to be a lot a lot of new games coming out in the next couple of months that i may potentially get a good increase in people checking them out because of this event and i am very grateful so I want to say thank you in advance to Twitch. I haven't even signed a contract yet, but thank you in advance to Twitch for the opportunity. Thank you to all of you who've been really positive influence this year, coming out to the streams and supporting me and, and basically, you know, saying, listen, we know times are tough and we know shit sucks on YouTube, but look, we're still here for you and we want you to succeed. You know, pretty cool. All right, so. That's the news. Now, I'll have more information for you on specifics over the course of the week. What I actually need to do is get the contract. That's actually what happened is over, over this weekend, I was like, geez, this event's supposed to be next weekend. I haven't even gotten a contract or any specifics for it yet. I need to talk to Twitch. So I wrote them an email and immediately my contact wrote me back and apologized. Oh, God, I'm sorry. You know, we're actually backlogged on getting all the work done for TwitchCon and that's, it's our fault. And she sent me a big update email basically saying, yes, it's still happening. Don't worry. Uh, you know, yes, you can, you know, basically start uh, getting ready for this event. And so there you go. I can't give you specifics on the game. I can't give you specifics on the time. I can't really give you many specifics. All I can tell you is this special extensions event happens one week from today. It will be on my stream during the day like this. It may be a different time than usual. Like it may be later or whatever, and I might run late. So I may do something beforehand. Like I said, maybe Spyro, finish it up or something. All right. <clears throat> but I'm excited. And I certainly hope that you guys will be here next week for this special event. And you know, maybe more stuff will come out of it, positive in the future. We'll see. All right. So that's the good news. There you go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your support. And thank you for make, you know, helping me get to this point and making it happen. 
Um, maybe we can keep doing stuff like this in the future, right? All right. Now, folks, let's talk a little bit. Let's do the plugs, and then we'll get started with gameplay here of Evil Within. I'm dying to start playing, by the way. Okay? I seriously can't... I can't wait to start playing, so I want to get started, so let's get through the plugs. First of all, Patreon, folks. This month, my Patreon campaign at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. Uh, it's running throughout October. If we hit the funding level by the end of the month, which is the same $1,125 it's been all year, all right? So we're about $200 to $250 away from hitting that right now. And it's very doable to do it. We still got half the month, okay? If I do hit this funding goal as a special celebratory event for reaching it, I'm going to be doing a Player Unknown's Battlegrounds Marathon 7-plus hour gameplay stream around the end of November or early December. All right, people have been asking me to play this game ever since it became the hottest game on Steam, the hottest PC game. Everyone's playing this thing, all right? People really want to see me experience it. Um, and, you know, last week or what was it, two weeks ago, I played Fortnite Battle Royal, and that was kind of a taste of that style of gameplay, and I'll be honest, I liked it. And people are saying that Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is the best version of that style of gameplay, okay? Um, so yeah, if I hit this funding goal, I will be doing this special event um, as a reward, you know, for hitting the goal. A big celebration, okay? Um, f previous times that I've done events like this involved me playing games such as Minecraft, Persona, and Yakuza, all franchises that really I had no prior experience of these franchises or no, knew what to expect and once getting exposure during these events i ended up loving the games and some of them i went on to do multiple playthroughs of future games and the like okay so in that regard um in that regard this could end up being an event that turns into great future content as well all right so please consider pledging to my patreon by the end of the month if you do pledge all right. Not only are you directly support, supporting my efforts to be able to do daily live streams and ongoing on-demand videos like I do right now, all right, but also you get personal perks. For example, you could get text or verbal thank yous in my videos for your pledge. You could get your pro or excuse me, you could get your question answered on Ask the King, which is my bi-monthly Q and A show, which by the way is going to happen on October 26th this month. You could get a private Q and A video made. Okay, you could get. All kinds of stuff as personal perks and rewards for pledging to my Patreon. So please check it out. Patreon.com forward slash DarksideFill. As I said, we got two weeks left to raise about 250 bucks. Uh, I'm pretty confident we can do it. We did it last month. And I know people want to see me play Player Unknown's Battlegrounds because they've been asking for it for three months now. So please consider pledging. Make it happen. And we'll have this very special event either in late November or early December. Okay? <clears throat> Sound good? Alrighty. <clears throat> Alright, number two, folks, is my Teespring store, which you can see the plugs for right now. Obviously, teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP Gaming, where you can get all kinds of fun merch. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, stickers, mugs, all kinds of apparel. I think there's hats there, too. All kinds of stuff. Um, all featured with my different kind of sayings, my memes, my logos, etc. All made by viewers and fans. It's really high quality stuff. I personally own four shirts right now. And I love them all. I even use the mug here. I actually show you. I'm, I just realized I'm wearing a shirt today. Incidentally, today I'm wearing one of the shirts. Look, I'm wearing the I Hate Skeleton shirt. Pretty nice. And the Skull Mug, which I drink out of every single day on stream here. Okay. In addition... I just want to let you know, these are the high quality shirts. This is the nice, soft, stretchy material. It's not that cheapo uh, t-shirts. I mean, I could make them out of the cheapo material. That's an option, but I don't want to do that. I actually upgrade the shirt material, uh, but I still keep the shirt prices very reasonable, okay? So, give it a look. If you buy anything from my Teespring store, I get a pretty sizable commission. It helps me out. And hint, hint, if you or a, another person that you know are a fan or a viewer of mine, maybe you want a little bit of swag some merch with my mug on it or a logo or whatever uh christmas is coming it's right around the corner by the way teespring ships internationally i should mention that <clears throat> so please give it a look all right all right all right and now last but not least ladies and gents if indeed you are here live on the stream today and you're watching and you're enjoying yourself you're liking the chills and the thrills of evil within 2 and my gameplay of it 
And, you know, you have the option to cheer, sub, or tip me. All right? If you do any of those things, first of all, I'm very grateful. And I thank everyone in advance who will do it. And I thank those who already have here on the pre-stream. Because I'm going to give some shout-outs in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to give you a shout-out. And, and thanks for, you know, your contributions. Now, FYI, I do want to say this up front. Please do not do crazy small 10-bit cheers constantly asking me questions and interrupting the gameplay of the stream. It's one thing to leave a comment that's funny or pertinent or a quick question that has to do with the game. But to constantly be asking me questions that are off topic as if this were my Q&A show is not the idea behind cheering. So please don't make it that. All right. And number two, also know it's at my discretion. If you leave a negative or a troll-like cheer, I don't have to read it. And I don't have to give you a shout out. Just FYI. All right. I leave that within my... Uh, <clears throat> my jurisdiction, my discretion to do that, all right? Number two, if you cheer 50 bits or more, if you sub to the channel and click the share button, or if you tip me $2 or more, I will actually be giving you, uh, well, you'll, I won't be giving you, you'll be getting an actual on-screen pop-up notification as well, okay? So you get double recognition. <clears throat> you're going to get the verbal recognition, and you're going to get visual recognition as well. Uh, I should give, once again, give a, an awesome shout out to Dr. Zombius, longtime viewer and fan who made the animations for the month of October here. In fact, he's made all the animations that I've ever used on stream here this year, but these are especially good because they're all Halloween horror themed. For all this cheering, subbing, and tipping you guys have been doing, you've been seeing these for the past week. They're really awesome. So again, thank you to Dr. Zombius for those. You'll be seeing those all throughout the month of October, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Okay. All right, so thank you, everyone. And now it's time for some shout-outs for those who have already contributed. Let's go ahead and do it. Scroll down here. So first off, thank you to Guitar Player 1939 who actually tipped me $5 before I even started the stream. And you know, he asked a pertinent question. I've been getting questions about this recently, so I think this is a good question to answer here on pre-stream. He says, will you be reviewing Destiny 2? Ladies and gentlemen, things have changed. All right? Some will say for the better... Some would say for the worse. I guess it depends on your own subjective view. Um, I really don't have time at this point with all the new releases coming out and all the games I'm playing and all the streaming I'm doing to do offline content. I just don't... The, the very little bit that I have time for is, for example, the Wiki Preview um, and maybe film a DSP tries it here or there. But outside of that, I don't... I, you know, I, I'm just constantly gaming. I'm constantly playing new games and constantly putting out streams for you guys. And I'll be honest... That's what's keeping food on the table. That's what's paying my bills. All right. Sadly, because YouTube completely fucked up their website with losing all their advertisers earlier this year. Like, that wasn't bad enough. Now they demonetize every friggin' video. And I actually didn't really say too much about this. Recently, they demonetized the last two week in preview videos on my King of Hate Vlogs channel. Can you believe that? The week in preview, where all I do is talk about my gaming schedule. There's literally nothing ever inflammatory in the week of preview. But they demonetize two of those videos. So you see my dilemma here. If I sit here and play games every day and have fun with you guys and do interactive streams, right? It's profitable and allows me to keep doing this daily. If I stop doing streams to take time out to start filming game reviews again, guess what? That's time away from streaming. That's less money I'm going to make. And quite honestly, I have no confidence whatsoever that any of the game reviews that I put on YouTube are going to do anything significant for me. Number one, because typically my game reviews only get between five to 10,000 views anyway. So there's not mass interest in them. And number two, because YouTube may just demonetize it anyway, which has been happening. It happened to all the videos on KO Gaming, which is why I've stopped using that channel. And now it's starting to happen on the King of Hate Vlogs. So it's like, you know, I can't win. No matter what I do here, I can't win. <clears throat> Seriously. Haha, <laughs> Sir James D. Tech just said, seems like YouTube is dedicated to becoming the next MySpace. I think they are. I don't know how much who could screw up your goddamn business and not listen to your feedback of the people who provide the content that makes you the money in the first place and expect that you're still going to be successful. I mean, it's asinine. The upper management of YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, is brain-dead idiots. All right? They're so worried about SJW issues and fucking shit like that. They're so worried about that that they don't actually run a business that works or makes sense. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's how you're really successful in the modern business era, right? To have your head so firmly shoved up your fucking ass 
that you can't do anything right and you completely ignore all the feedback you get from everyone who tells you you're doing it wrong. I just don't get it anymore, folks. I don't. So anyway, in regards to Guitar Player's question, am I going to be reviewing Destiny 2? Probably not. I don't know if I'm going to be doing any reviews anytime soon. Because for me to take time away from streaming games, which is what you guys want to see, right? You guys, are outright, you said, more streams, Phil. More gameplay, more streams. We love the streams. We contribute when you're on stream with your actions, your views, and your contributions this year. You guys have shown me that streaming is the future and the way to go. To kind of try to disassociate myself from my past of just on-demand videos on YouTube. And by the way, I just want to say this. Don't think that this means I'm not doing YouTube videos. That's not the case. What I'm saying here is I need to refocus my efforts as I've done this year and realize that streaming on Twitch is the future while making on-demand videos for YouTube is the distant past because YouTube has completely destroyed the possibility of being successful on YouTube through their own idiotic actions, okay? So, yeah, why would I spend time away from streaming, which everyone wants to see, when I could be streaming, right? And I understand there's people who always used to watch my game reviews. All right, I get that. Here's what you got to do. And this is being real, real matter of fact. Watch the last part of any playthrough that I do. Typically in the last part of any playthrough, I will give you my opinion on the game, right? It's basically a very abridged version of one of my reviews, which used to be very fleshed out, but it's still something. Or, I hate to say it, because I know some people would say, well, I don't have time for this. You got to watch the playthroughs or the streams. Because if you watch me play the games, you'll actually get an on-the-fly opinion of what I'm thinking about the game, right? If you really want my best opinion on The Evil Within 2, watch me play The Evil Within 2. Then you'll know what I'm liking and what I'm not liking because there's some things I like and there's some things I don't like. And that's the bottom line. And I will summarize that in the final part when the credits roll. But that's going to probably going to end up being what this is going to be at this point. Because again, I can't see myself taking time away from doing what's successful and what's working to do what's not working because YouTube fucked it up. Right? <clears throat> and that's just being very, very, you know, real with all you and honest. Uh, not that I don't like doing reviews, I do. But why would I take, you know, time away from streaming to do reviews that aren't going to make any money because YouTube fucked everything up? Right? <laughs> now, there may come a day when I make so much, you know, uh, from the streams that I don't even have to worry about YouTube anymore. Like, the YouTube income will be negligible, right? If, even when that day comes, then maybe I'll have a little bit more freedom to say, okay, well, one day I will take away from streaming to do these reviews or whatever because I don't need to worry about, oh, I didn't make money today. Sadly, I'm nowhere near that. I'm at a point where every day matters to me, folks. Every single day I'm clawing and scraping to basically, you know, pay the bills. And I need to keep at it. I need to keep plugging away. I need to be here every day on stream for you guys uh, to keep this moving or else I'm not going to be continuing to be successful. All right. <clears throat> Fair enough. All right, there's your answer. I hope the guitar player feels that that was a good enough answer for his $5 tip. Um, all right. Shout out to Nolber87, who resubscribed to the channel for the seventh month in a row. And he says, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Congrats, Phil, on the Twitch partnership. Sounds cool. Yeah, I'm very excited about this coming next weekend. I hope it turns out well. And, you know, hopefully it gives me some exposure. When I'm, the way I see it is this. At the very least... Hopefully it'll give me some exposure to people who have never heard of me before and maybe check out the streams in the future. At the best, maybe it'll go so well that Twitch will want me to do other stuff like this in the future. I don't know. But either way, it's a win-win, in my opinion. All right. Shout out to Rockstar. He did a 10-bit cheer. He said, I recent, I realized... No. I, boy, I can't read. I noticed your views are going up recently since great games are out. Uh, shout out to Boz2161, who's did a uh, done a 275-bit cheer. Thank you, Boz, for the cheer. Shout out to Octoa, who did a 20-bit cheer. He says, congrats on the incredible opportunities. I know I'm, I'll be tuning in, and I'm sure it'll be fun. I certainly hope it will be. Shout out to Sam... Uh, Sam RL... Wait a minute. <sighs> Try this again. Shout out to Sam R. Lassiter, who did a 10-bit cheer. and says, Phil, do you ever think you'll bring back Cooking with the King? Probably not. I've already said a million times why I won't, and I'm not going to go into detail about it now. As I've said, those kind of questions better saved for Ask the King coming up later this month. All right. Wow, here we go. 
Swallow My Nut. Yes, I know. What a, what a fun name. And by the way, I should warn you, Swallow My Nut. You may get banned from Twitch for having that name. Someone uh, had a name between a cock and a hard place. And they got banned from Twitch for having that name. So just to warn you, you may want to change your name if you can. So your account doesn't get banned. Okay. But anyway, he did a 30-bit cheer and he says, Did you hear... Hold on a second. Did you hear the whole Naughty Dog controversy where an ex-Naughty Dog male employee allegedly said he was sexually harassed by a Naughty Dog higher-up and he was offered $20,000 by Sony to shut it up? Naughty Dog had a statement today saying there was no evidence of anything. I'll give them in the benefit of the doubt, but it's a good time for random people to come out and spew all this bullshit for attention and gullible idiots will all believe it. It could just be a salty employee fired for something else. Yeah, um, listen... Obviously, right now, the biggest hot topic everywhere is sexual harassment in the workplace, especially because of the big Harvey Weinstein controversy and everything going on with that right now. I guarantee you we're going to have a bunch of people coming out. Some will be legit and some probably won't be, all claiming sexual harassment. I mean, obviously, with the whole Weinstein thing going on, this is a good time for people to maybe say, now I feel empowered to do this and speak the truth that I held, you know, in, in secret for so many years. And other people may just see dollar signs. So, it's going to be hard to tell what's true and what's not. But, I think the key here is evidence. If this guy has evidence, then he may as well present it, right? But if you don't have evidence, you know, you're kind of just flapping in the breeze. You know what I mean? You're exposing yourself to the public by saying this. But with no evidence, how can you prove anything and what's the point? So, hopefully this guy has evidence, you know. If so, you know, it's funny because people say, oh, a victim of sexual harassment, don't speak up. It's a bad thing. Listen, sometimes these, these victims just don't have evidence. And you know what's going to happen if they don't have the evidence in writing or something to prove that someone did something. If they make an accusation, they could end up screwing their entire lives over, right? So I don't blame a victim of sexual harassment who has no evidence that ever happened of not coming forward. I don't. I think people who do that are kind of fucked up to blame the victim. Let's blame the person who got who got hurt, right? Oh, look. Someone was walking down the street and got shot. Oh, we'll blame them because they were walking in a bad they were walking in a bad neighborhood. Well, maybe they just shouldn't have got fucking shot. I'm just saying, it's kind of fucked up, man. So, I wish the best to anyone who honestly did actually get sexual harassed and hopefully all these things come to a a, a resolution at this point where it's all coming forward now. At the same time, I think we all do need to take it with a grain of salt. As I said, there will be people coming forward just looking for dollar signs. All right. Shout out to JX136, who did a 500-bit cheer. Thank you very much, JX136, for the cheer. I appreciate it. Shout out to Tyler JKU, who did a 15-bit cheer and said, Sorry, just got here. What did I miss? Oh, you missed everything, Tyler. You missed everything, dude. You missed it all. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to how to make up for it. I guess you're gonna have to watch the pre-stream later on on uh, YouTube and see what you missed because man, what an explosion! All right, shout out to an anonymous two dollar tipper, and I guess this is a good time to bring this up as well because people have been asking me about this recently. He says, "So I sh I know a few people in the chat have been asking about it." According to Twitch, it says you have 1,400 viewers or more, but in the viewer list, it shows only 321 viewers. Any thoughts on that, Phil? It's very simple, folks. I don't care how many viewers I have. I'm not I'm not even lying here. I don't have anything open on my laptop to even see how many people are on a stream. Right now, I literally have no idea how many people are watching me. It wouldn't matter if I had 20,000 people or 20 people watching me. I treat the streams exactly the same. And this is a practice that I started this year in particular, because I'll be honest here, I used to look at stream numbers, I used to worry about stream numbers, and I used to get all, you know, up and, and, and worried that if I didn't have high stream view count, that I wasn't going to be making enough money, and I can't pay my bills, and it would affect me, alright? Here's the truth, folks. The truth is, viewership on Twitch does not matter. That's the truth. It doesn't matter. It's about support. It's about people who support you. People who are going to go the extra mile. People who do things like cheer, sub, and tip. People who will go to my Teespring and buy a shirt. People who will pledge to my Patreon. People who will watch the videos on YouTube. That's what it's about. It's not about stream viewership. So I don't care. I don't watch it. And it, regardless of if there's someone out there who's viewbotting me for whatever reason. First of all, I tell you, it's not me. 
first of all, I don't know any, enough about any of that shit to even do it. I don't know anything about viewbotting. I have no knowledge of it. I never asked anyone to do it. So if it is happening to my streams, it's not in my will. It's I did not ask for it. It's being done against my knowledge and will. So I've already talked to Twitch about this a few months ago because I think it was happening um, about the middle of the year. This was happening. And I went to Twitch in particular and wrote them and said, listen, I, it looks like it's happening and it's not me. And I don't know if there's anything you guys want me to do about it or anything, but I can't. I don't even know what's going on. And they responded and said, do not worry about it. If it's not you, you know, you're, you will never be held accountable because, you know, if there's no proof, it's not a big deal. Right? And therefore, it's, there's no worries. It's basically they're try, on their end, they're researching ways to stop that from happening, but they don't know how yet. And they're trying to figure it out. And eventually they are going to do away with it completely when they figure that out. But right now they said, just, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. So, <clears throat> there you go, folks. Um, I don't know about it. I don't care about it. Um, you know, it doesn't affect me. Getting a bunch of robots, if that is what it is, watching my streams doesn't benefit me in the least at all. Um, it's the people who contribute that really matter. And regardless of how many people are watching the streams, I can tell you, you guys have been tremendously amazing this year with your support. And I'm very happy. That's why I'm still here, folks, because of you. All right, so thank you for that. All right, shout out to a Amoxerus who did a 10-bit cheers and sucks about YouTube. Hope you're all right. Anyway, I mean, I'm very limited. I mean, I've been very honest about this, and I'll be honest again. Things are incredibly tight. I'm barely making it month to month um, with what I make, okay? Barely paying all the bills, but I am paying all the bills. Uh, sadly, there is this thing looming over my head in the background. All right, and oh my God, excuse me. And, um, you know, that being said, um, I don't know what's going to happen. I might get bad news any day soon here, and it may be like, that's it for me. I have to sell my house. I have to move back to Connecticut, which would totally fuck everything up. I mean, I'll be honest, the whole business would kind of crumble here with my streams and everything, and I don't know. There's a lot of looming factors right now, folks, that are affecting things, and I can't tell you more than that. Until I get more information, I don't have any for you right now. But what I can tell you is this. Thank you for your support. Let's keep it going as long as we can. All right? All right. Shout out to Manny Peregrine, who did a 10-bit cheer. And he said, You complained about Twitch viewership a few days ago. You do care. Content over context. Wrong. <laughs> that is not what happened at all. But I love it when idiots like you, because yes, Manny, you are a troll. And uh, I'm done with you now. I'm going to ban you yet again from the stream chat because I'm so tired of you doing this shit every day. Seriously. Um, I've been, By the way, I've banned this guy a million times. I don't know how he keeps getting back into the stream chat because he is a troll and he does this every fucking day. He's just negative sh asshole every day. Yet he still shows up. I don't know. But anyway, that's not what happened. What I was saying was I don't know why people are so negative about Shadow of War because... People are saying this whole loot box controversy. That's what I said. But of course, people will spin that into Phil's complaining about views, which didn't happen. But they will do whatever they want to try to prove their own negative points because they're idiots. Just like this next troll cheer, who literally said the same thing, leading me to believe that this Alexander 99K is probably Manny Peregrine and or they're in the same group sitting in another chat right now saying, Did you hear what Phil said about views? Let's both troll cheer him right now. <laughs> As they circle jerk each other into a fucking corner. Two idiots. Okay. So, folks. That is the deal. That is the deal with everything going on. I hope that you enjoyed the pre-stream. It was very long. But uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm excited for more Evil Within 2. I hope you are. Are you ready? Sound good? All right. All right. Well, folks, that is it. Thank you very much for watching the pre-stream. And, oh, hold on. Monique. Monique 2 just subscribed to the channel for the eighth month in a row. Thank you, Monique, for the resub. Appreciate that. Actually, this is pretty good. Um, well, a lot of people will be coming up on their one-year sub anniversaries in November because it was November of last year that I returned to Twitch. So in less than a month, some people will be getting their new chat badges, 
which is going to be a pretty bling crown. You're going to like this. So, we'll see you next month. It'll be pretty sweet, right? <clears throat> All right. Thank you, everybody. It is now time to begin with the Evil Within 2 gameplay for today. Thank you, and let's begin. <laughs> 